Hello, and this is the video lecture for Understanding Project Management, a Practical Guide, Second Edition, Chapter 16, An Overview of Agile Delivery. So to this point, the focus has been on uh, project management using more traditional methods. Um, and in this video lecture, we're going to look at another form uh, that projects may, may be completed known as Agile. And so the first step is an introduction to agile delivery. Secondly, we're going to focus on a specific framework of agile called Scrum. And finally, we're going to talk about some of the um, differences and similarities between waterfall and agile methods as our, as our last step. So an introduction to agile delivery. For many projects, the process of developing a plan and then executing the plan is very appropriate and will be in the future. So there are many, many projects where that is true. However, there are situations, particularly in the area of software development, where these traditional methods are not always as effective. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the variability of software, about, about uh, the creative process. Is, is, um, there are times when agile delivery uh, works more effectively in that environment. So this has led to, to de the development of Agile methods. Agile was born from the software uh, development um, industry and, and, and projects. As mentioned before, while there are many Agile frameworks, this course will focus on a very popular one called Scrum. So here's an overview of the Scrum framework. During Scrum, a number of iterations, known as sprints, are performed by the Scrum team. Each sprint is brief, usually lasting from one to four weeks. And within a project, each sprint is a consistent duration of time. So if it's one week, it will be, all of the sprints will be one week. If it's three weeks, all of the sprints will be three weeks and so on. During each sprint, the following takes place. A sprint planning meeting is the start, followed by the development work with daily scrums. This is the majority of the, of the sprint will be uh, the development work. Um, then a sprint review meeting takes place. And finally, the last step is a sprint retrospective. And then the process repeats itself. The scrum team, we mentioned it a, a, a moment ago, uh, consists of the following. There is a product owner who represents the, the, the needs and requirements, is the voice of the, of the organization, of the business. The work of each sprint is completed by the development team, who are the people, the team members who will actually perform whatever the work of the project is. And the person responsible for ensuring Scrum processes processes are followed is the scrum master. Now the scrum master is a, is a different role than a project manager, whereas a project manager normally or often directs the activities of the project team. The scrum master does not um, uh, uh, direct the activities of the development team, uh, instead ensures that the scrum processes is followed and, and often um, removes obstacles or attempts to, to remove obstacles that the development team encounters during the sprints. So key idea, the three key roles that make up the scrum team are the product owner, development team, and scrum master. So let's take a look at our uh, first video, which will be describing the scrum team. So we'll just watch this together. Sophie has recently been appointed Scrum Master for the DecoCam product support team. This team is responsible for the development and delivery of product support related to the DecoCam application. Fadijit Kumar is the team's product owner and the development team is as follows. Chris Sandberg, Sarah Pierce, Maddie Wen, Eli Briggs. While each of the developers possess specific skills, they are expected to perform the work as required. 
from both within and outside of their own specialties. This requires communication, cross-training, and mentoring within the development team. With the upcoming release of DecoCam version 4, there is a significant amount of support that is required for the product launch. This will likely be the focus of the next few sprints. Okay, so you saw in this video, we'll just get it moved forward to the next, to, to the next slide. You saw in the video that um, the Scrum team uh, composed, was composed of the same team members that we saw previously. And, and during this chapter, it's like we're able to rewind the DecoCam version for a product launch and see what it would look like. Uh, if if Scrum if the Scrum framework was was used, so here you saw that um, uh, Fadijit was the uh, the uh, uh, product owner, the uh, Sophie was the uh, Scrum master, and the other team members were the development team. So you can see how the 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 uh, the, the Scrum team was was made up. We're now going to go into sprint planning, which is our next step. As mentioned before, the, the sprint planning meeting takes place at the start of the sprint. Um, user stories. Now, in, in uh, the, the requirements of the product are termed as user stories, and they are taken from what is known as a product backlog. So all of the, um, uh, the uh, list of things that we could do, which are user stories. They're in a document or a place called a product backlog and are considered during the sprint planning meeting are considered for possible inclusion in the upcoming sprint or in this sprint. The development team estimates the amount of work to be completed during the sprint um, using various techniques. One is, is something called planning poker that may be used. So the development team is estimating how much time each one of those things will take, or at least the user stories for consideration. They're, they try to determine what can be included. User stories that will be accomplished or plan to be accomplished during the sprint are placed in, a, in a, something called a sprint backlog. So items from the product backlog are moved into the sprint backlog and that becomes um, what the, uh, the, the, the Scrum team uh, intends to accomplish during the sprint. So key idea during sprint planning, the content of the sprint is defined and the development team self-organizes to determine how the work will get completed. So we're going to take a look now at the sprint planning meeting and see what takes place during that, during that meeting. This is a key meeting again that takes place at the start of the sprint. So let's watch this together. It's 8.30 a.m. on Monday morning and the sprint planning meeting is ready to begin. Since the sprint is defined to be two weeks, the sprint planning meeting is scheduled for the next four hours. Sophie, the product owner, Fadijit, and the development team, Chris, Sarah, Maddie, and Eli, are in attendance. A key focus for the meeting is a recently identified epic, the product launch of DecoCam version 4. The meeting begins with Fadijit describing each user story contained in the product backlog. The following are two of the user stories. As a consumer, I want to read an informative press release so that I understand the features of DecoCam version 4. As a Deco Productions marketing associate, I want to be able to distribute interesting booth giveaways so that I can attract more conference attendees to the DecoCam booth. As Fadijit describes each user story, the development team asks a number of clarifying questions. Once the product backlog is understood, the development team tackles the question of what can be accomplished during the sprint. While the priority of the user stories will be a primary consideration, the development team will also take into account other factors, including the following. Dependencies that may be present. 
For example, the user story related to the press release may be a high priority, but it may be beneficial to include it in a later sprint in case the content of the press release is affected by the work of this or other sprints. User stories with higher complexity may need to start in an earlier sprint. For example, user stories related to the promotional video will likely benefit from being developed over multiple sprints. The team uses planning poker to determine the amount of work that may be included in the sprint. This is always a fun part of the meeting with lots of lively discussion about each team member's assessment of the work to be completed. After a period of time, the development team finalizes the user stories that will be completed during this sprint. This is always a challenging part of the meeting. The development team wants to complete as much as possible during the sprint. However, they don't want to overcommit and not be able to deliver by the end of the sprint. After extensive deliberation, the sprint backlog is created. Next, the development team self-organizes in order to determine how the work will be performed during the sprint. Throughout this process, Sophie keeps everything moving forward so that the scrum team completes the sprint planning process. She's careful not to direct the development team to include certain user stories or to plan their work in a certain way. Her role is to facilitate, not to direct. Okay, so we saw the uh, activities that took place during that initial meeting. That then leads us to the development work. So during that, but just uh, staying on the uh, sprint planning meeting for a moment, you saw the user stories that were being, um, being looked at, you saw the format of them and so on, as well as the process for selecting the work to be, to be completed uh, during the sprint, in effect, the creation of the sprint backlog. And that's a key, that's a key output of the sprint planning meeting. That then moves us on to development work. The majority of the sprint is development work, but the, the large amount of time is, is development. Uh, the team is by and large self-directed. They're not, again, to emphasize the scrum uh, master does not manage directly the development team. The progress is displayed on the scrum board, often a very simple physical board consisting of three columns to do, doing, done, but there are other variations. And uh, sometimes it is a physical board or it can be electronic as well. Um, the progress of the sprint is also reflected and is reflected uh, in something called a burn down chart, which shows the amount of work remaining. Uh, in the in the sprint. Um, the amount of work completed, usually represented by points or days, uh, allows for the calculation of the team's velocity. So the team's velocity is, is how much work they can accomplish during a sprint. And the idea is to, you know, hopefully increase a team's velocity um, as it proceeds through the sprints and, and into, into future projects as well. The completion of the items in the sprint backlog creates the product increment. So the end result at the end of the sprint is something called the product increment. So let's take a look at the video for the development work and see what happens during this part of the sprint. It's 12.30 p.m. and the sprint planning meeting has just completed. Chris heads over to the scrum board and writes the name of each user story or user story subtask to be completed on a separate sticky note. He places each sticky note under the to-do column. Now the development team begins its work. Frequent discussions take place during the day as different approaches are contemplated and the work tends to pass back and forth frequently between the developers. As the days pass, sticky notes are moved from the to-do column to the doing column. 
A small celebration usually takes place when a sticky note moves to the Done column. The visible reminder of progress provided by the Scrum Board tends to focus and motivate the development team. The progress is also reflected in the burn down chart, another physical reminder of the team's progress. Fatijit drops by periodically during the day to answer questions and provide clarification to the development team. By answering questions as they come up, the momentum of the project is maintained. Sophie continues to support the team by ensuring that obstacles encountered by the development team are addressed and removed if possible. For example, Chris has been waiting for over 24 hours to receive an answer from the Supply Chain and Logistics Department regarding the trade show banners. In order to remove this obstacle, Sophie calls the manager of the department. Within an hour, Chris receives the required information. Okay, so that uh, showed us some of the work that was uh, taking place during the, uh, the development work. Uh, a key aspect of, of, of the development work is the daily scrum, something that happens, as the name implies, every day. It's a 15 min minute meeting held on a daily basis. Um, there's no chairs. It's often called a stand up, a daily stand up meeting as well. The purpose of the work is to determine the current state of the development work and it happens every day. It is not to solve detailed problems, the, it tends the 15 minutes. These are deferred to be discussed outside of the meeting. So the work of the sprint is completed during development. The daily scrum takes place at the same time each day for no more than 15 minutes. So let's take a look at the um, process of the daily scrum. So let's watch this together. Morning at 8.30 a.m., Sophie meets with the development team for a 15-minute stand-up meeting. As the name of the meeting suggests, everyone is standing. One by one, each developer indicates what they accomplished in the last workday, what they plan to accomplish in the next workday, and any obstacles in their way. Minimal questions are asked during this process. The point is to exchange information and synchronize the activities of the development team. However, Sophie makes special note of the obstacles as these are issues that she will help resolve following the meeting. The meeting takes place every day at the same time with everyone attending, no matter what is happening on the project. The daily scrum is a vital aspect of the sprint. As indicated, it's a vital aspect. It's very important that this daily meeting takes place. Um, and you can see the types of things. It's basically kind of a, you know, each person goes around uh, around the, the, um, uh, the meeting and describes, you know, what they, what they have done, what they're planning to do and any obstacles. And, and so in that way, communication flows amongst the team. And also those obstacles, as was shown, uh, the the, uh, the scrum master, Sophie, is taking note of those and seeing where um, she would be able to, to uh, uh, help out in terms of the, the resolution, perhaps, of those obstacles. So that then brings us to the sprint review. This is the third uh, step in the, uh, the scrum framework. So the sprint review meeting is held at the end of the sprint, right? So it's in the last, the last day of the sprint a meeting will be held. The product increment, remember that's the result of the sprint is demonstrated and should be in a state um, that it could be provided to customers if desired. So it's meant to be at the end of each sprint is a, a product that could be shipped to customers. That's the, the desire. So it's, so it's demonstrated. It's attended by the scrum team and, and other stakeholders as appropriate. Uh, so key idea, the product increment is demonstrated at the sprint review and any feedback, the, the uh, attendees and the other stakeholders uh, may, may be providing feedback to the team. 
uh, maybe you know giving them more information and so on. So again, there's a there's a big information exchange that's happening here. So let's see our video on this process on the um, the sprint review meeting. We'll see what happens. It's Friday afternoon and the sprint review is just starting. In addition to the scrum team, Arun Singh is attending, as well as Emma Mansfield, Director of Marketing. The development team is happy to report that all items on the sprint backlog were successfully completed and the sprint goal was met. A member of the development team demonstrates the product increment as follows. The trade show banner file indicating the graphics and wording a two-minute promotional video. As each demonstration takes place, a number of comments and possible improvements are suggested. Upon viewing the promotional video, additional ideas are generated. Fadijit, the product owner, takes notes on the comments and suggestions as these may be possible additions to the product backlog. Okay, so we saw the uh, the uh sprint review meeting take place. The last step is the sprint retrospective. It's the final meeting of the sprint. Uh, it's a meeting, it's held right after the sprint review meeting. It's the last thing that takes place during the sprint. It provides an opportunity for the scrum team to, to determine what went well, what did not go well, and what could be improved in the next sprint. This is similar to lessons learned, except it's performed more frequently. So whereas in traditional or waterfall project management, it's normally lessons learned will normally be done once at the end of the project. Uh, this is done frequently, in effect, after every sprint. Uh, key to note that in the sprint retrospective, uh, user stories, um, um, you know, the product backlog, the, the, what's going to be accomplished during the next sprint is not discussed. This is, this is purely about the process, about the improvement of how the work is being delivered. It's not specific content, and that, that is a key, key thing. So key idea processes related to the sprint and the scrum team are refined during the sprint retrospective. So let's watch our video on this in terms of the sprint retrospective meeting. Following the sprint review, the scrum team meets to perform the sprint retrospective. At the start of the meeting, Sophie reminds everyone that the purpose of the retrospective is to improve how the team will work together during future sprints. The meeting is not the place to discuss product backlog items or specific plans for the next sprint. As the discussion gets underway, the team provides a number of examples regarding things that went really well. The level of collaboration was determined to be high as everyone felt they were involved and that their point of view was being considered. The process of selecting the product backlog items was determined to be effective as a reasonable yet challenging number of items was selected. However, many team members agreed that the daily scrum was a little too early. Deco Productions has a flex time policy that provides employees some flexibility to choose the start and end times of their workday. While most of the team members are in the office by 8 a.m., Sarah and Eli like to arrive between 8.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. Additionally, there were also a couple of quality problems where a significant error was missed by the team. Based on the discussion, the team resolved to do the following. Move the daily scrum one hour later to 9.30 a.m. to allow each developer to resolve issues from the previous day before attending the meeting. Update their quality control processes so that each developer 
will ensure that their work is checked and verified by another developer before it is considered to be done. Since the team did complete the sprint backlog, the velocity for this sprint was 50 points. After some discussion, the team agrees that, based on the results of this sprint and the process improvements identified in this meeting, they will increase the next sprint to 55 points. As Scrum Master, Sophie takes notes of the discussion and records the recommended improvements. Both improvements will be implemented in the next sprint. And speaking of the next sprint, the sprint planning meeting for the second sprint is scheduled for first thing Monday morning. Time to enjoy a well-deserved weekend to be ready for next week. Okay, so that was the final step of the um of the uh, uh, of the sprint, and then the process repeats itself, and then that just goes cycles over and over and over uh, until the product increment is at the place needed. So that is that is a you know a, a very um, you know quick overview of the Scrum process. So now, just um, you know, it's a final step is a, a comparison of. Uh, some of the differences and similarities of, of the um, um, waterfall and agile. Um, this is covered in detail in the textbook. Uh, and there's various areas that are that are that are very, very key. You know, for example, in the area of management su support, um, agile requires significant management support because you can see that um, you know, the development team in many ways is self-directed. Uh, has has a great deal of autonomy and management needs to support that. Uh, they they would have less ongoing control of an agile project than perhaps they would in in, in a waterfall project. Uh, by its very nature, um, waterfall projects tend to be predictive. Their their nature is predicting the project. Is that's that's what a creation of a plan is is predicting the cost, the timing, you know, when things are gonna happen and so on, that's predictive planning. Um, Agile is more adaptive, is that as you can see, the, the scrum, uh, the, the sprints are designed to allow for new ideas and, and changes and, and for the project to be adapted as it proceeds. Uh, both of those provide um, both pros and cons. And so again, it, it depends upon the project, the, the type of, of thing being created as to whether a predictive type of planning model is, is, is best used or an adaptive planning model. Um, the team itself is organized differently. You know, in, a, in, in Waterfall, uh, project manager and project team members with more generally more defined roles versus in a... Um, in an agile type of project, um, there is, uh, you know, and certainly in Scrum, there is a Scrum master. There's a development team that is more autonomous, and so on. There, agile has and Scrum has the concept of a product owner, which is a little different from from waterfall. So the the roles are different between the two types. Quality and risk, both waterfall and agile are both concerned. You know, need to think about quality and need to think about and manage risk. So that is that is something that both, you know, the, the, the issues of quality and risk are certainly applied to, to both types of, of delivery. Stakeholder communication, while it, it happens differently between waterfall and agile is, is very, very important. Um, project procurement um, is, is probably better suited to the waterfall method in general. Uh, because of the contractual nature and and the certainty required at times in in in, uh, in procurement projects, though a contract could be structured to allow for agile development, or even parts of the project could be done within an agile uh, uh, development uh, approach. But it would be, you know, that would be something that would be uh, needing to be factored into the the procurement and the contract. 
Um, so it's a, a very broad subject. The concept of, of projects that benefit from waterfall or benefit from agile or really have a little bit, somewhat of both hybrid is a, is a very important pro uh, um, concept and, and idea in, in projects today. So this is an important topic. So overall key idea, depending on the customer's requirements, the work may be best accomplished through waterfall, through agile, or a hybrid of both approaches. That is also possible is to, is to strive to get the best of both worlds, of both types of methods. Some key, lots of key terminology that was covered as you can see within the, uh, within the Agile and Scrum uh, frameworks, there is uh, a significant um, number of different and new terms that are, that are there. And again, you can see uh, more of the uh, 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 terminology and the definitions in chapter textbook of the, uh, in chapter 16 of the textbook for a complete list of the key terms and definitions. There's some of the references from this presentation and that is the uh, end of the video lecture for chapter 16, Agile Delivery.